Today we're going to talk about using the Loop Deck Plus with Capture One Pro. Hey guys, this is Dylan Golby, photographer here in Seoul again. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk about something a little bit different, and that is my new toy, the Loop Deck Plus. Now you've probably seen quite a few videos of this sort of floating around YouTube and different places reviewing it. Uh, I paid for this, this is not any form of endorsed um, uh, product placement here, this is just, you know, my device that I'd like to kind of share with you guys. And I'm going to talk a little bit about using it with Capture One Pro. They've released a beta set of software that now allows the Loop Deck Plus, which was designed for use with primarily with Adobe Lightroom, to actually uh, be used in Capture One Pro. So I'm going to talk about the positives, the negatives, and what could be improved in future releases as this is beta software. Alright, so first up, for those of you who don't know what the Loop Deck Plus is, it's basically a more tangible, a more physical kind of way to interact with the things we typically do to RAW files as photographers. So you'll probably seen uh, colorists in, in film studios and things like that using a whole lot of dials to be able to change the colors, the exposure and things like that in a, in a piece of film that they're working on. And with the Loop Deck Plus, which has a couple of other different options out there as well, you're able to do that with uh, photography as well. So rather than remembering a set of keyboard shortcuts on a, on a keyboard and then using your mouse to move sliders back and forward, you're able to do that in a more sort of direct uh, method of interaction using dials and, and things on the Loop Deck Plus itself. Okay, so the moment you pull the Loop Deck Plus out of the box, you can tell instantly that it's been designed to work with Adobe Lightroom. It's been designed with that in mind. Uh, all of the sliders and dials have the same names as they do in Adobe Lightroom, and of course you have, you know, the uh, the eight color channels that the Adobe products tend to break things up into. Um, you also have things like vibrance. Um, you have clarity, shadows and highlights, those sorts of things on here, blacks and whites. Now those have uh, functions that have been mapped into Capture One, and they work reasonably well. So. Let's jump in, uh, first of all, and just see how all of this sort of plays with Capture One. So I want to reiterate that this is beta software. This is Loop Deck's first attempt at being able to integrate their hardware with Capture One. So there are a few quirks, a few things that may not work the way that Capture One uses would expect them to work, and they are working on this and they're looking for feedback, um, which is partly why I'm making this video, is just to give my feedback on how I feel that this works and how it would work better for me if they improved it in certain ways. So let's take a look at a couple of the tools. Uh, I'll run you through sort of how they work and how they might be improved from my perspective. If you've got other ideas, feel free to leave them down below. I'm hoping that, uh, that uh, the people at Capture One will actually watch this video and take the time to read the comments and just see what sort of feedback we have to offer them. So let's jump in. All right, so one of the first things that you're going to want to do in any raw editing software is once you've brought your files in, you're going to want to start selecting them. And the Loop Deck does give a good set of controls for that that work fairly well with Capture One. Uh, so you've got a standard uh, pad that you can use arrow keys to move around your images. Now, these are just some images that I shot on a short road trip with a couple of friends the other day. Uh, I'm in no way a landscape photographer. These are just the images that I happen to have on hand at the moment. So let's have a quick flick through these. And as you can see, I've got Capture One set up in a way that I wouldn't normally work with it. Um, I've got it set up onto two monitors here where I have a, the most real estate dedicated to my image editing and then my selections and my uh, tools over here. And the reason that I don't typically work like that is that I find that when you're using a keyboard and mouse the tools are too far away um, when they're on a second monitor. So I like to have them on the same monitor as I'm working, but the benefit of having this then is that I don't have to worry about which tool I'm using, I don't have to see the rest of my selection, I can literally just focus on this image, but still have everything available to me if I need it. So that's a really cool benefit of using this. So anyhow, back to the topic. We have the standard arrow keys to move around with. You can also use the control dial um, to move up and down, which is this big dial on the left here. And I believe if you hold the function key, you can actually have it go left and right, if you release the function key, it goes up and down. So if that's a more comfortable way for you to work, then yeah, you can you can work that way as well. But maybe I'm old school, I prefer using the arrow keys. So let's go through and let's just say if I wanted to uh, select some of these images, for example. Um, let's say this one, I wanted to select it. Over on the left hand side, we have a whole lot of selection tools. Now you have um, the color codes, so red, yellow, green, blue, and uh, purple. 
and if you select one of those it will actually assign that color to the image so that it will then be selected if you want to deselect that you can then hit uh, C1 custom one and it will remove that flag uh, if you want to use star ratings if you're the kind of person that uses star ratings you can hit the uh, rating versus color uh, button here and it will switch into the star rating mode when you can give them a star rating same thing again C1 will remove that now I typically use colors um, which means that I will assign this one a green rating now one of the other things that you can do here is you can actually sort by hitting function and then the uh, the star rating, you can actually have it use uh, Capture One's filters to just bring up that particular star rating. It doesn't seem to work with colors at the moment, so I'd like to see that in the next release. But for now, let's go through and quickly just select a couple more images. Uh, let's take that one, and let's take that one. Okay, so we now have three images that I would like to edit. So I'll bring up the green rating here. Okay. Okay, so now that we've got these three selected, let's take a quick look at some of the adjustment tools that we have. Um, probably the first thing I would want to do here, and the first issue that I've seen with this is to actually crop this. So by hitting the control dial, uh, we go into crop mode, and the default action for it is to be able to rotate. Now, although in this image it's okay, I can get the horizon pretty straight with such a large adjustment, what I found is that each sort of click of the control dial makes a rather large uh, tilt in the in the crop tool so what I'm hoping is that they'll be able to perhaps uh, fix that a little bit and have uh, smaller maybe you know 0.1 degree um, changes so that when we're really finessing a horizon or, or something like that we'll be able to, to really have full control over it um, mm. the other thing that I might want from that is to be able to actually crop in and out with one of the other dials now I've tried them all and none of them seem to crop in and out it'd be really great if I could just dial one of these and have it go zroop, zroop, zroop in and out um, that would really really make cropping uh, a much easier thing I would never have to reach for the mouse so Either way, let's, uh, let's hit control dial again and that will take us out of cropping mode. Um, it also selects the hand tool rather than the selection tool, which I'm not sure why it does that when it reverts out of a tool, um, but it seems to do that. So anyhow, let's get on to adjusting this a little bit. Um, probably the first thing you'll notice is that the highlights are a little bit blown in the sky there. So if we, do, we turn our highlight dial here, we can bring a little bit of that back. The next thing we might want to do is just bring the exposure up a little bit so we get a bit more uh, detail in here. Then maybe raise the shadows a little bit so we can see into those rocks a little more. And add a little bit of clarity. We have sliders or dials for all of this. And then my favorite tool also has something attached which is structure. So if I dial that I'll get some nice fine details in those rocks. And I feel like with an image like that we're pretty good. Alright, so there's not a whole lot I want to do to this image, but I will raise the exposure, bring the highlights down, maybe raise the shadows a little bit, and add some clarity, add a little bit of structure, uh, maybe bring the highlights down a little bit more, and then one of the coolest things about this uh, loop deck actually is being able to adjust the white balance really easily, and I feel like this might be a little bit cool, so We'll dial up the temperature there. Yeah, and I feel like that's that's a little bit better. So uh, this is one of the cool things, and I was playing with this with portraits yesterday, actually, and I think that it's a really, really uh, easy way to get skin tones looking really good. You have tint in one pair of fingers and temperature in the other, and you just go back and forth until the skin looks absolutely perfect, which is so much easier than working with individual uh, sliders on a mouse. So for people like me who really struggle with getting the white balance just perfect in there, that's a really cool way to do it. Okay, so on to the next image. Um, this one probably needs the most work, so let's see just how quick it is. So first thing to do, I might raise the exposure a little bit, raise the shadows a little bit, recover some highlights, uh, set the black point, which can be done using the curve and this, uh, this dial here, and I might set the white point as well to bring in a little more contrast, add a little bit of clarity, a little bit more structure to bring in those fine details, warm the overall image up a little bit, and I think 
there we are pretty close to done. Now one of the other things that you can do if you really want to is to add a vignette using this as well. So if we hold the function key and turn the D1 dial by default, that will actually uh, bring in a vignette if we go left, or a white vignette if you're feeling a bit uh, 1980s Christmas card, you can do that as well. But the only issue with things like this is in order to bring them back to zero, you actually have to look at the slider over there and dial it all the way back to zero. Now I've heard that with, or I've seen that with the Lightroom version you can just push the, the button and it will reset it to zero. I'm hoping that that can be done with either some sort of a macro or just you know being able to implement it through Capture One, but being able to push and reset those um, would be fantastic. Um, so that's probably where I would go with this, but maybe the final thing that you can actually uh, do with this that's really, really cool is up here you have all of the settings for Lightroom's color uh, tools. So you have the sort of the eight color bands and you have hue, saturation, and luminance. Now with Capture One it works a little bit differently, so they've implemented it a little bit differently. Uh, the hue, saturation, and luminance buttons will now switch into your three-way color selector and they will switch to the highlights, uh, shadows, and midtones. And then the first three dials will adjust the HSL values of those. So let's hit luminance here, which I believe is the shadows. I'm still getting used to this. Yep, there we go. And I can use this to do quite an extreme adjustment if you'd like to, but we won't be doing that. Um, so I can adjust the uh, warmth of that there just by putting a little bit more saturation into that warm color. But then let's say I wanted those shadows to be blue. So I can dial that all the way around and then add a little bit more of that in. Okay. And then maybe darken them down a little bit. Perfect. All right, so I think that's pretty much the capabilities that this thing has at the moment. Um, a few things that I would like to see improved are, I think first, as I mentioned with the crop tool, some of the tools tend to uh, make quite large jumps when you turn the dials. So for example, the brightness uh, slider jumps in intervals of five. Um, rather than intervals of one when you turn the dial, so that would be great. Across the crop tool, I'd love to be able to see the crop tool um, be used to also do the crop uh, as well uh, within within Capture One. The other thing that I think would be great to have some sort of functionality for would be able to scroll through the aspect ratios. So when you have the crop tool open, one of the kind of painful things about Capture One is the way that the crop tool makes you select each of the, the aspect ratios. So I think maybe being able to just hit a custom button on this thing and turn uh, dial to be able to select different ratios would be a really great way to uh, fix that issue and just make it a lot quicker to switch ratios. So one of the other things that happens in Capture One is a very customizable program and so you're able to add tools to different tool tabs, you're able to move the tool tabs around, and at the moment there isn't really an elegant way for the loop deck to be able to handle those customizations. So if you, for example, um, dial the, uh, the white balance settings in on this, it will automatically try to take you to where it thinks the color tab is. Now if you've uh, for example, put your white balance into your exposure tab because you want to have everything all in one one tool tab, then it's going to be going to the wrong tab. If you've moved your exposure tab to the, or sorry, your color tab to the beginning because that's the first thing you like to do with an image, it will jump across to what, where the color tab used to be. Now, you can set which tab it's going to jump to for what it thinks to be each set of tools. Uh, so, for example, if you've put all your tools in one tool tab, you can then just set all of them to tab one and it will never jump out of it. Uh, however, if you've got them organized into multiple tabs, what you'll find is that capture, uh, the, every time you make a change, Capture One will jump to the tab that has been set. So even if it's not where the tool is currently, it's the, the default tab that it would be in. So that's a little bit annoying and I think there's going to be a more elegant way to handle it. Um, perhaps uh, associating each of these dials with the tool itself rather than the tool tab it's supposed to be in, although I'm not sure how possible that is within the Capture One API, so just my suggestion. Okay, so there's maybe two more things that I might want to have um, in the functionality for the way that I use Capture One, and the first of them is the 
export button. The export button currently takes you to the uh, export variants, which is uh, one way of exporting things in Capture One. However, I find that I'm often doing two exports, one for a larger size and one for web size or proofing at the same time. And so I would prefer that hitting the export button actually took me to the process panel. And then that would give me the option to do two exports at once and I could hit process there and have them both uh, be exported at the same time. So not sure, maybe that can be an option. And the other thing that I would like to see is the ability to set the different curves in the base characteristics panel. So being a Fujifilm user and this being Capture One Pro for Fujifilm, I have all of the uh, Fujifilm film profiles as the curves in the uh, base characteristics panel and I would love to be able to set a few of those to the, the uh, P1, P2, P3 at the top here, be able to hit that and have it change to say Classic Chrome or Velvia or whatever else that I have it set to. I think that would be really useful for Fujifilm users. So uh, for other manufacturers I'd love to hear what you guys might set those to. Um, would you have one set to say the Canon Standard or the Nikon Standard or what would you use them for? Would you make your own uh, your own presets or your own uh, your own styles for for Capture One? How would you use those buttons if you were given the option to program them to sort of anything within the app that you wanted to? All right, guys. So I hope that that's given you an idea of what the Loop Deck is for, kind of who it's for, how it interacts with Capture One, how I feel that it could be improved. Uh, I would love for you guys to throw your comments below, and maybe if you've got a Loop Deck, how have you customized it to work with Capture One, so that maybe some of these issues that I've raised can actually be overcome even now. So I'd love to hear it if you can. Um, either way, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, hit like, subscribe. Any other comments you might have, leave them below, and I'll see you next time. Thanks a lot.